Hi, I'm Randy Starling from the Cleveland Clinic, and I'm a heart failure cardiologist. And I want to tell you about some really exciting news that came forward at the American College of Cardiology meeting. It's now been published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and that's the results of the STITCH trial. The STITCH trial, just to remind everyone, looked at cohorts of patients with reduced ejection fraction, coronary artery disease that were electively considered for treatment. Patients with left main disease, patients with unstable angina, where the clear decision was to proceed with bypass surgery were not considered eligible. So the initial results of the STITCH trial, which were published over five years ago, concluded that when looking at medical treatment versus bypass surgery, a survival benefit was not demonstrated through the first five years. This, I think, led to some change in practice with respect to searching for viability, searching for the ideal candidate to have bypass surgery, and probably a reluctance of many cardiologists to send patients to bypass surgery, feeling that medical therapy was, quote, just as good. In other words, equipoise was proven by the STITCH trial. One caveat was seen was that the curves for survival were starting to spread toward that fifth year, but it did not reach statistical significance. So to the credit of the investigators, and this was an NIH-funded trial, Eric Velasquez and others from uh, Duke uh, led much of this work, continued to follow these patients, continued to meticulously collect information on outcomes, and presented the results at the ACC, which, as I mentioned, were published in the New England Journal. What was seen was that the curve split, and by 10 years, there was a significant survival benefit in patients with reduced ejection fraction and coronary artery disease eligible for bypass that received surgical therapy versus medical therapy. So what does this mean? I think that cardiologists, and specifically heart failure cardiologists, we, we need to definitely re-examine our whole approach to eligibility. Just to refresh your memory, uh, much of the work that's been published to date by Dr. Bono from Northwestern and other STITCH investigators raises a lot of questions about the uh, advisability uh, and predictability of viability testing. So in my practice, when I see a patient with reduced ejection fraction, coronary artery disease, suitable targets for revascularization, I think the best bet for long-term survival is to have a discussion with the cardiac surgeon about this patient's suitability for coronary bypass surgery. You may also raise the question and say, well, what about uh, angioplasty or PCI? And I think that's a great question. It's something to think about, but that has not been answered by the STITCH trial. So when you read the publication in the New England Journal, you'll see in the end of the discussion, the point is raised that STITCH does not answer the question whether percutaneous revascularization is equivalent to surgical revascularization, it answers the question that surgical revascularization in appropriate patients with reduced ejection fraction will deliver better long-term survival. One last somber note is that when you look at 10-year survival in this patient population, 35 to 40 percent of the patients, unfortunately, don't survive. So this is a patient population that needs to be followed routinely and carefully by their cardiovascular specialists because some of these patients will tip over and need more advanced forms of therapy 
or face mortality when they're not eligible for those therapies. Thank you.